Hello and welcome to the last lecture of the course Introduction to Mobile Robotics. Today we are going to learn how to use Occupancy Grid for mapping. Ok, let's talk about the mapping problem. In this scenario, what we have is a map with some obstacles and we have a robot in this environment. If we check or what the robot notes about the environment, we know that actually the robot knows nothing about the environment. It needs to know where the obstacles are in order to navigate in the environment. In this case, our assumption is that the localization is perfectly known. We know with accuracy the location of the robot and we can measure the environment. So the problem now is like, how can we combine the location of the robot and the measurements to obtain the map of the environment. Let's start to find a representation of the environment. In this case, we are talking about the grid representation. We will create cells, a set of cells, that will be enumerated so we can identify them. And each cell will be will have two options. It can be occupied or it can be free. So for this specific example, in the places where we will have obstacles, the values of the cell will be equals to one, right? Even if the cell is partially occupied, we will say that there is an obstacle in that in, in that cell. This brings a problem, um, it's, it's a small problem, that's why we need higher resolution in this grid, is that if we have a low resolution, some parts of the environment will be constrained, like in this case we have a small space there where the robot can go through, but in our representation we cannot have it. The solution for this is just adding uh, more resolution to the grid, but I will keep this grid just to make it simple and easy to visualize. Now let's formalize the objective. What we want to have is an estimate of estimation of the map. Uh, as we can see, like every every cell can be zero one. So the number of possibilities of the, maps are of the maps are very large. So we will simplify the problem and we will try to study the cells. And for each cell, we can use a set of measurements to obtain a, an estimation of that cell. Okay. Additionally, I need to highlight that the measurements can have noise. So we need a model for those measurements and that's why we have a sensor model we have been talking about the sensor model in the previous cases but now in this context we will have a similar case we have the robot that is located at the location xt and it has a sensor that allows it to identify obstacles or objects in front of it it can be a laser, it can be a stereo camera, it can be a sonar, but the important part is like it can identify if there is a wall or an obstacle in front of it. In this case, we call the measurement as ZT, and for each cell, we can identify or we can um, sense if they are free or if they are occupied, if they sense, if they a sonar cannot go through, it means like it might be occupied. So for that, we have a measurement model. The measurement model is basically the measurement that we have based on the location of the robot and the cell or the, the map. This can be obtained by getting many measurements. But what we are interested here is in the inverse model, which is the cell based on the measurement and the location of the robot. Fortunately, here we can use the Bayes theorem to obtain the inverse model 
based on the measurement model and we will find that they are actually proportional using the Bayes theorem. Now, an important concept that we need to learn is the log odds ratio. So instead of studying the probability of a cell be occupied or not being occupied, instead of studying them independently, what we are going to study is the ratio of the probability of being occupied over not being occupied. We want to know how many times one is more likely than the other. We can apply the log function and we know that that value will be proportional, but the log function will give us uh, additional properties and having applying the Bayes theorem and some uh, arithmetic equations we can use the measurement model to obtain a function this function or the we can call it the log odds function uh, will depend on three terms the first term is the inverse sensor model i mean it's the log of the probability of the uh, cell using the um, the measurement and the location of the robot and we have that information from the previous from the uh, inverse sensor model we have the previous belief in this case we can use all the previous measurements z z1 c2 c3 until uh, z t minus 1 to build that as and the third element is the initial belief which is just the initial values that we get when we don't know anything about the map so the, the great part of this function is that it can be computed as you see recursively the new the the new value of the function can be computed based on the on the previous value and that means that we can add measurements to the system right we can uh, we can continuously add add measurements and we will just improve our estimation of the map now what we do for each cell it's quite simple depending on the ratio of the sensor we will have a very basic algorithm that is if the cell is inside the range of the sensor on the sensor measurement we will compute the log odd functions that depends on our previous belief of the of the cell and our new measurement and the location of the robot and if it is not in the range we just simply keep the the previous value that we had this is pretty simple and we can see that here the system doesn't depend on the on the control input uh, we we just need the um, the values of the sensor measurement and the robot location that's it we don't in this case we don't care about how to move from one point to another because we have an exact location then that's an important assumption now if we want to see this method in action we can just combine many measurements and apply the log out fun ox function for each cell and each measurement and in this scenario what we get here is that we can obtain the map based on all these measurements we can see that the the map identifies that there are rooms there is a corridor and the quality is not that high also because of the quality of the sensor in this case a, a sonar was was used using a lidar or a laser uh, we can get better maps this is just another example on the left we have the um, the map of the robot and on the right we have the original uh, blue blueprints of the of the environment we can see that they are very similar there is a little bit of noise and there is a loss of resolution 
but that also depends on the objects that you have in the environment when you are doing the mapping and the resolution that you initially choose. Okay, so this is what we have for, uh, for today. Uh, just to finish, we have some conclusions and remarks. And the first part is that we have been studying the case when we know the map and we don't know the location of the robot, right? That's from the previous videos where we learn how to use the Kalman filter and also the particle filter. The second case is when we know the location of the robot, but we don't know the map. And for that, we have been using mapping and occupancy grid. That is the technique that we studied today. But there is another case, like what if we don't do, we don't have anything. We don't have one, we don't have two, we don't have the map and we don't have the location of the robot, uh, like in scenarios where we just drop a robot, uh, like in a cave or a, a, new a new space where we cannot have perfect localization of the robot um, and we also don't know the map. So what can we do in those type of scenarios? And that's the, form, for, uh, the further studying from these lectures. And this is just combining one, uh, one and two. And that technique is called simultaneous localization and mapping, mapping also known as SLAM in the robotics literature. There are multiple techniques. One of them is based on the particle filter you can find more information about uh, SLAM in the Probabilistic Robotics book by Sebastian Tron. And this has been wonderful. Thank you very much for uh, looking at these uh, lectures. This is the last lecture of this series of lectures of the course Introduction to Mobile Robotics. Thank you.